And, uh, okay, I'm not saying, uh, unfortunately, all this, this uh, terrible tragedies that happen with the shootings and, and things like that, unfortunately, we have a percentage of our population, and that's also statistic, uh, statistical, that have some mental health and eventually is going to do something, uh, some, something crazy. But imagine all those guys that are lonely, uh, they are not having their, uh, how can I call that, their, their discharge of hormones. Right, yeah, yeah. And how can you build a society like that? These people are, you know, because that's, that's the, our strongest impulse. It's stronger than eating. But we've, we've done a couple things to create that, I think, in our society. We've, one, taken away, like, we've, I mean, for many years now, taken away the um, uh, ideal of monogamy. We've also taken away the ideal of the nuclear family. And then we've also pumped our society full of, you know, um, sexual dysphoria, uh, gender dysphoria. We've created, like, all, we've encouraged all kinds of different forms of relationships that would have been anathema to our society, you know, even 20 years ago. And, and now we've created pumped women full of this idea of, you know, be the breadwinner, be the CEO, be the leader, be the, you know, go in there and, and then and don't take shit from a man. And we've pushed that, and then we've also pushed this whole toxic masculinity thing, you know, like men don't be aggressive, don't pursue this, and also all the shit that's happened in the world is your fucking fault, and so you need to, like, shut up and sit down and not be ambitious. So we've created all these emasculated men who are timid to go to anyone, because then even if you have, like, a girl who, like, <laughs> even if you have a girl who... You're scared to death. You're going to get the Me Too movement if you even, like, pursue a girl. But then no girl, like, girls actually want a guy who's kind of aggressive. Yeah, I mean, not, like, physically necessarily, but, you know, like, a guy who's, like, pursuing her. But then guys are scared to do that. So you created this whole dichotomy where the girl has to be the pursuer. The girl has to be the aggressive one. And then we've created this bar, this expectation that's way up here. And then we've also pumped our society full of pornography. So, you know, like the guy's taking away all the drive in a guy because guess what? He can go see any woman he wants for free online, beat off. And that's part of what, you know, if you want to take away a guy's drive, you know, like give him sex any time of the day in the privacy of his bedroom or for the guys who are getting it, you know, they're never going to commit to a girl or usually won't because they're getting as much as they want all the time anyways. I think that one of the main problems is, and that's our fault too, uh, that's a mea culpa, I think we lied to women for a long time because yeah, yeah. we wanted the intimacy, sure. so we never, you know, hey, of course you're right, I, yeah, I'll never yeah, yeah, disagree. Yeah. We, we didn't disagree, we didn't tell them the truth, and now it's too late. Yeah. We are paying the price. <laughs> so yeah, what, sure. what I think the problem is, one of the main problems is that uh, everything you mentioned, uh, generated something that what women want intellectually is not what actually arouses uh, arouse them. That's that's the point. Right, right. What they want unconsciously is different than what they want intellectually. They want a man that is 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 take cares of uh, of his appearance, is emotionally available, sensitive. I mean. Unfortunately, all these guys are gay. Yeah, or the great majority. Say. You know, <laughs> they are well organized. It's you know, they create this it's something that doesn't exist, like a, right. a six pack. And of course, you have, but it's is like less than one percent of guys. Right. Yeah. So unfortunately, you know, what happens is the the majority of women are sharing these guys because if eighty percent of women are going out of twenty percent of guys. They are sharing the same guy. That's simple math. Have you ever uh, read the play, the Greek play, Lysistrata? Yes, I actually, <laughs> actually was the second play I directed. Oh, really? No yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the concept. Women's of Athens. Yeah. Right. The, the, uh, the, the Aristophanes. Right, yeah. So the, yeah. the storyline, for anyone listening who doesn't know it, is these, uh, the, 
the women, correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a while mm-hmm. since I've read it, the women don't want their husbands to go to war. To go to war, yeah. And so they, they basically say they're going to abstain from having sex with any of them and realize they can run the entire city. They can run by everything. Not, by just withholding yeah. sex, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it just shows a little bit how men are wired, but also the power that women can have, you yeah. know, in that regard. You know, that's another thing we share. It's like... Uh, you know, I'm saying all these things. I just want to make very sure we are both heterosexual men. Yeah. <laughs> because we have yes. so many things in common, but we are both, you know. Uh, uh, in fact, your wife's running around yeah, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm very much, uh, you know, but we have so many things in common that I said, well, it's a waste if we don't. Because we both love uh, ancient uh, Greek culture and, 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 and things like that. And, uh, but yes, I, I think that this is one of the powers they have because they hold the keys, the, 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 the keys for the intimate, intimate uh, relationship and uh, intimate relationship. And we actually hold the, the relationship relationship part. We decide if we're going to commit with the woman, if we're going to marry a woman, we are the ones that propose. So we, we, we guard the gates of relationship and they guard the gates of intimacy. Well, and it's like, uh, my big fat Greek wedding where they, uh, the woman says, uh, "My, the man is the head of the household, but the woman is the neck and turns yeah. the head wherever <laughs> she wants. Whatever she wants, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, at what point is, you know, and we see that throughout every, you know, tra- Greek tragedy or otherwise throughout, you know, every piece of literature and in history, what's the great downfall of every man? I mean, you get two, right? Two great downfalls of every man. It's pride mm-hmm. and women. I mean, that's that's the downfall of so many men. Yeah. You go through every Bible story, and whether it's Bathsheba or Jezebel, you know, you go through every, you know... Greek, Icarus. Yeah, Icarus. I mean, it's always, yeah. you know, women. But it's when, I mean, Adam and Eve, you know, like, it's... it's, it's lust when, and pride. Right, lust and pride are the two great downfalls of a man yeah. being successful. And how do you, how do you rein those in? Um, and it doesn't mean you don't have ambition and it doesn't mean you don't have a woman, but like, where do you, where do you, how do you not be controlled and tempted by those things? As as I, as I always say, uh, you know, I've studied a lot of things. I said that to you many times, you know, because I'm, I'm the old guy, so I'm (laughs) giving you, uh, uh, some advice, but I mean, if I can summarize, I've studied, uh, all Eastern, not all, but. Buddhism and Shinto, Japan Shinto, Zen Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, I, I've studied a lot of other cultures and other religions, uh, philosophies, stoicism, mm-hmm. a lot. And if I can summarize in one word, is balance, harmony. 